But it's also extremely important to call out sin and not just be real mild-mannered and say, well, this is what the Bible says. This is a sin. You shouldn't do this. But to cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, and say, hey, thus saith the Lord, this is wickedness, this is sin. Don't get involved in this because you're making God angry. And there's a difference in the delivery, and it's God's instructing his preachers to, hey, don't hold back. Because when you are impassioned about this, it's going to come across as having a lot more meaning, and it should. And look, this is, I'm not saying this is something that like should be faked or be a big phony and just put on an act, right? Because that's also not, and for those of you that want to preach and maybe pastor one day, don't ever fake the, the, the crying aloud and the sparing not and lifting up your voice like a trumpet. It ought to come naturally because you care about the word of God, because you care about people, you care about the truth, and you need, you're, you're trying to express something that's extremely important. Amen. And when we see that here in Isaiah, Isaiah is warning the people about their sins and their transgressions. And what are you doing? He's warning them that, look, God is angry, and he's going to come and destroy you. Right? It's, it's, it's that level of, of excitement that needs to be there. It, it would be similar as if, you know, you see someone's, your neighbor's house is on fire, and you know they're asleep, and they're not aware of the danger that's coming their way, and if, if you just let them continue on their way, you know, they're going to end up being destroyed. So when you see that happening, you're not going to go, oh, I don't really want to bother them too much, right? I mean, they might be, they're getting good rest, but I probably should tell them about that. No, you're going to be, hey, wake up, wait, you know, get, get up. You're about to be destroyed. And you're going to be animated, excited. And this is the way that when, you know, depending on the subject, especially, but, but when you're preaching God's word and you're going to try to show people, you know, their, their sin and, and show them their transgressions, it's because you know that God is going to bring judgment and punishment. There's a good reason to get excited about that and to lift up your voice like a trumpet and don't hold back and just let it all out there because it's for their own good. Sometimes people just need to be waking up a little bit and shaking and say, hey, what's, you know, what's going on? Okay, well, this must be really important because it is really important. And this is a type of preaching, you know, and I know many people would share the same testimony, but that's this is the type of preaching I needed. Because sometimes you can know some things are wrong, but you find ways of justifying them in your mind. You need to hear someone just spell it out and be real plain and real specific and just say, this is extremely wicked. You got someone yelling about it, you're going, oh man. Yeah, I kind of downplayed that in my life. I knew it wasn't right, but I think I'm going to get right with God now. Because what it does is it, is it helps portray how God feels about something since you don't necessarily get that directly from God other than through His Word. Right? God's emotion. You're, you're not, it's not like you know, at home, kids know when dad's upset because dad's physically present there and you can see and hear and everything else. Our Heavenly Father is not physically present in the same sense, right? Obviously, we know God's everywhere. I'm not denying that. It's just that, that, that physical manifestation of the Lord being around. Like every time he is around and you see the man of God just bent over in fear and falling on their face and, and you know, in the presence of the Lord and the, his power and his might. We need to be reminded of that. Because he's not just manifesting himself regularly and coming in the great winds and, and, and all the stuff like you see with Elijah and we see with you know, Moses and other people where just this great power is demonstrated. He doesn't do that for everybody. He's not just making himself manifest that way.